strike all amendment. And two things that would change from the bill as introduced. I um, would have got, get, this amendment would get rid of the purpose and intent section and just get right into the requirement, which would be in section one for the State Ethics Commission by November 15th to submit to this on the House GovOps Committee a proposed state code of ethics for statutory enactment that would apply to the executive branch and to the legislative branch for non-core legislative duties and then options for implementation and enforcement of that proposed state code. Um, and in doing so, the commission under B would be required to seek input from the executive and legislative branches, advocacy groups, and the public prior to submitting those recommendations. Section two is the extension of the current funding source for the commission, which is currently scheduled to run out at the end of this fiscal year. So this would extend it for another year with the effective date on passage. And just, I, I think that advocacy groups could include a lot of different, I mean, they could include the media, uh, good government groups, um, municipal, it could include a lot of people. It just seems better to for straight advocacy groups than try, try to name them. Yeah. So, does anybody want to, would like to comment on this draft? Can I, may I ask a question? You may ask a question. Okay. Um, I had version 2.1, and I'm not sure what the difference is between the Friday version and the uh, 3.1. Yeah, like, uh, we removed the find for the purpose oh. and findings because it was um, redundant because it was also stated in lines 8 and 9 and um, 10 through 12. And we switched implementation and enforcement from enforcement and implementation made sense to do implementation before enforcement. So we switched those. The, that really was the only thing. Okay. <clears throat> so the only other thing, again, I, I don't mean to open this up, but <coughs> judicial branch. Yeah. We can't make references to that in this bill. So I think it raises constitutional concerns to do so. It's okay. the same reason why this bill says um, for the legislative branch non for non-core legislative duties. Um, the judicial branch has administrative control over the courts of this state and disciplinary control over judges and attorneys. So attempting, the General Assembly can only control by statute what the Constitution does not. I think that language of the Constitution provides the judicial branch, particularly the Supreme Court, with the authority over judges and what should um, be conduct that would subject them to discipline um, and how they administer their courts, including their judges. And that umbrella would also include attorneys. Uh, yeah, uh, with that language with, I mean, I think there is a distinction between administrative control over the judicial branch, arguably is a broader umbrella than disciplinary Page control. 22. Thank you disciplinary control over both judges and attorneys. Um, I did have a conversation with the court administrator out in the uh, hallway today. I think, I believe she's going to be putting some uh, thoughts together on um, the suggestion I heard um, on the way to work today uh, that all of the statewide executive branch officials are suggesting that the code apply to all three branches. Um, I do think that raises concerns. Um, I expect the judicial branch to weigh in on this at a future time. On the letter? Yes. Yeah, because it very clearly says the Supreme Court shall have administrative control of all the courts and disciplinary authority concerning all judicial officers and attorneys at law in the state. So they discipline all attorneys and all judges okay. and have administrative control of all the courts, which seems to imply that they have been control over their their staff. Isn't that what Mike Kennedy ran? That that group that no. oversaw he, the discipline of the lawyer uh, of the state. Yeah, yes, he yes, he did. Yeah, that was yeah. Mike's. Yeah, Kennedy's. He's I think yeah. left that. But. Yeah, but anyway, so um, I would actually. 
think that ours is, if they want that in their letter, that's their letter, and they'll have to deal with the judiciary. We don't have to deal with the judiciary. Would a courthouse clerk fall under state a statewide um, employee? Well, it, but it says they have a, th that would, I would court. think that that would be up, to, that there would be a difference of opinion there, because it does say that they have administrative control of all the courts, which could be interpreted to mean that they also have control over the, um, the actions of all their employees. Okay. That, and then I think that's something that the courts are going to have to work out with the statewide officers that signed that. But we don't have to wander into that at all. all right. Allison? So what's our plan to respond to that letter, given it's addressed to you? Uh, well, what's your plan to respond? I'm not going to respond at all. I mean, what, what is there to respond to? This came to? last week. I just, I'm, I'm just asking. I said, is, is it online? It is online. Oh, thanks. I, I, I sent, I sent um, Doug Hoffer a note and said, thank you for doing this. And I don't know what else we need to. Well, I think it would be appropriate to respond and say, thanks for this. This is what we're aiming to do in 198. And, and the judiciary is not in our purview. I mean, you know, you might identify that the Constitution explicitly uh, says that we aren't able to. Uh, we, I guess we could do that. Yes, I, I think that would be helpful. OK. I took this as just their letter saying they're going to abide by a state code of ethics. That's what the, the six people that signed it said. They're going to abide by the state code of ethics. Right. Well, I think we okay. should okay. Can, They okay. say they will abide by a state code of yes. ethics? Yes. Do they have to abide by the state code of ethics? The current state code of ethics? Well, there's a new one that we have to be dealing with. Enforceable? I mean, that, that's a conversation you're going to have in the future because under this bill, the commission is going to propose one um, with the police. And it's going to cover the executive and the legislative branch for not for legislative duty. So the executive branch, does that include these office, statewide office holders? Yes. Okay. Yes. And they're saying we intend to right. abide by it. So I think we can have this constitutional conversation now, or we could have it later um, after you get the proposed code. I mean, if you could include the judicial branch now in the, this no. recommendation. I think at some point, you'll probably want to have a full constitutional conversation that includes the judicial branch to get their perspective. Um, but I, but I, I don't think we need to have that now, because okay. we're not including the judiciary right. in ours. We're not mentioning judiciary at all. And the fact that they mentioned judiciary is their issue, not ours. I agree, but it's a letter directed to addressed to you. Right. And I think we should respond by t letting them know what, what we're doing, and that in fact, constitutionally, the judiciary, nice for them to abide by that, but that our work can't include the judiciary at this point. And they didn't say it should. Okay, fine. Right. No, no, I'm just saying it raised it, so I mean. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm going to. It I, sets the expectations of the public that somehow we are going to have a state code of ethics that also addresses the judiciary, and I think it would be helpful for the public to see a public response from you and Sarah that says, yes, we're moving forward on this, and uh, but we are unable to do that. Anyway. Okay, we can, I don't know that any public out there really cares, but we could do that. But that's their, they'll have to deal with that. If the judiciary goes to all their offices and says, that's their issue. Not ours. Okay, but we can send a letter that I don't to, he, to to each of them, I guess, address it to each of them and say, okay. I, I'll I'll write a letter. Okay. And, and we're, we'll we're right okay. with you if you want to do it with the committee. We're here. Well, I when I write letters, I write it from me for the committee. That's right, because it isn't me that's. But can we get back to 198, yes. which is what we want to deal with, not their letter and what they think? That was nice of them to do it, but. In some ways, it's, it's continuing conversation. It's good because it reminds me why we're choosing to give the State Ethics Commission until next year to come up with the statutory code of that. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. As well opposed said. to trying to do it all this year. Right, right. That's right. some pretty basic stuff that needs to continue to be debated. 
So with that in mind, I'd like to move that we vote out draft 3.1 of test 198. Okay, help me. Wait, voting. Larry, sheet. did you have something to say? Yeah, if I could be heard on that. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Larry Newman's from the Ethics Commission. Um, I have one major concern about the, the changes to S-198, and that is the, the part that requires the Ethics Commission to submit to you options for enforcing and implementing the code by next fall. Well, I, and this is not a, this is more a political concern than a legal concern. I'm very afraid that if we are discussing enforcement at the same time we're talking about a code, that it will kill the code. I'm very afraid that the, there'll be so much attention to who is, you know, under the enforcement, who might be the victim or the subject of enforcement, and what that enforcement might look like, that the focus on having a good working code will be lost. I'm very concerned about that. That's why we proposed it the way we did. That I think we really, it's, and this, is, this mirrors or echoes the comment that I made for S-157, is really, it's a chicken and egg situation. And until we have a code that everybody agrees on, um, I think discussion of enforcement is premature. I understand and I share the desire to have something in place, but where we are right now and where we need to go and the route that we need to go to get there, I think, uh, requires a step-by-step -step approach. And you know, I, I was thinking back early when I was in law school, I was given the knee-jerk liberal um, award for my class because I was always on the, the left end of things. And here I am taking a very, I think, conservative approach to this, which seems out of character for me. But I think the most realistic way to getting a code is to focus on the code and then have a discussion down the road about enforcement. It would be great if we could do it all at once. I don't see that happening, and I just hate to give anyone who might not be a firm supporter of an ethics code something to tie to it or, or use to defeat an ethics code. That, that's the long and short of it. So I, I'm sure everybody wants to weigh in on that, but I, I see this as it says that you're going to do a proposed state code of ethics. That's right. pretty clear. You're going to have a draft, a proposed state code of ethics. That it's, I mean, it'll get debated and changed and wording will get changed and everything. It doesn't say you're going to have a proposal for implementation and enforcement. It says you're going to throw out some options. It could be, infor it, it could be implemented this way. It could be implemented some other way. Maybe we should do it the way New Jersey does it. Maybe we should do it, that, that's the way I see that and so that because those questions will come up when we when we look at um, the adopting the code, I believe there will be questions from our colleagues and from us about. So, what does this mean in terms of implementation? What does it mean in terms of wh where we're going to go? And I and I may be wrong, but I think that what we're asking you to do is look at different options that might be there, not come with a proposal. Right, no, of how it would happen, but anyway, that, so I, I may be wrong about that, but I think you're right. I agree. I think I'd be, I would be. I think that the people outside this room who don't understand the kind of windy conversations we've had about this over the last couple of years think we're moving too slow, and I think there's you know they're they're, they're right, and we are moving pretty slow to make this ethics commission as strong as it needs to be, and I think if we just do the code of ethics and then start a conversation about how we're going to implement it and enforce it. It's just going to drag it out another session or two. It's just, I'd be really afraid that we're slowing it down too much. Because I think we've already slowed it down quite a bit. For, for good reason, I'm not being overly critical. I think we've had reasons why we've slowed it down. But I think that to further slow it would be a mistake. Alex? 
Uh, I agree with Anthony, and it has been since the beginning in draft 1.1, and I'm trying to find the original that enforcement was mentioned. Uh, the original here. Uh, uh, I believe it, well, it, anyway, it's in draft 1.1, um, and it is, oh, and that in draft, um, as, a, as originally uh, introduced, it has that would be enforced by the commission. So I think an enforce, how it's going to be enforced is critically important, um, and it's certainly one of the questions we have and have had. Um, I guess I, in a chance to have second eyes on this, I'm questioning why non-core has appeared. Because it, that's it wasn't in yes, it was draft 1.1, and it was in as introduced. Yes, but what is non -core. I want core legislative no, wait, duties. Okay, and not core. let me. Yeah, the Constitution says that we have control over our core duties. Our core duties are voting. So anything that has to do with voting, like conflict of interest and when you should vote, all of that is a core duty that the Constitution says we have, we control ourselves. Right, we have rules for that and all that. Well, yes, it's, it's there. Our non-core duties are things like whether we're misusing state property or um, uh, stealing money out of, the, out of Penny's jar upstairs or I, Whatever those non-core, there's a list of about eight or ten of them that, that are specifically come. Okay, okay right. and non-core because it was in the original one, and it, and it wasn't in one point one. Okay, right. But that's that's what that means, and it. And that's why we have the Senate Ethics Panel, or whatever it's called, and we have, there's a House Ethics Panel. Right. If there's a question about whether you voted on something yes. in a way that you were not supposed to vote on it, it wouldn't come to the Ethics Commission, but it would be dealt with by the by Senate the or Ethics. House Ethics Commission okay. Committee. Or if you took money for a vote or something like that, that it, it, the core duty is the vote and, and creating legislation to vote on. So that's why that's there. I'm sympathetic to what Larry's brought up. That said, I will probably go with the rest of the committee on the vote. You're suggesting, I assume, that we take out lines 13 and 14. Um, if I'm yeah. looking at the right version, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, here's mm -hmm. not a minor yeah. point, but. It's just interesting, and the dynamics of this are you're asking the Ethics Commission to give you, I'm assuming, a fairly comprehensive list of options. They can and come up with two or four. They're going to be debated. They're going to be, yeah. but just and we're going to change them as you know. Well, I would be shocked if they weren't. But yeah, because yeah, yeah. the code, of, the way I see it, the, the code of ethics that the commission comes up with. I'm imagining that's going to go to the floor of the Senate and the House next year. We're going to debate it and adopt it, hopefully adopt it. The options for implementation and enforcement, it's going to be more like a mini report that you bring back here to the committee to have discussion about. It's not necessarily yeah. going to go to the floor. Okay. Yeah. At least I don't think so, unless we get really confident. And I think there might be just as much political fallout if we don't put this in here as if we do. But I, I may be wrong. You. I, I may be wrong. In terms of timing, then I don't see the difference with, between leaving it out and leaving it in. If, if, if in the end we have a code that we could get adopted next year, but then you're saying that the implementation and enforcement would come at a later date, yeah. it's well, still it going to be. It may or may not, but it just won't be, it won't go necessarily go to the floor in the same way as a package. But it, but it might. I mean, it, it might, might come might, up with might. a staggered implementation. Right. I mean, we, we don't know until we're presented with That's what they're working. Having lines of 13 and 14 in there is good because we may decide that we're ready to bring it all to the floor. Or that we're ready to bring it to the floor in stages. The, right. We have the code of ethics, and the this part will be uh, we would like implemented by uh, this date, and this part was going to take longer to implement. So we, I I don't know, but I, I I think it's important to have to have that information, and really it's asking you to come back with some just some options, not 
not a recommendation right. and not a proposal, but just some options. Yeah. Your best thinking, though. Right. No, and, and I certainly have reviewed enough statutes to have yeah. some ideas, and I can put together a list of things. I, I, where I am most troubled is the idea that a conversation on the code will be distracted by uh, a discussion on it. On how it's enforced. The, right. the conversation here in this yes. building or in the, the conversation? Yeah. Oh, well, I think we we have to be responsible for managing that. Well, we can. Right. I'm just yeah. expressing my concern. Yeah. 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 You've seen um, that. And the other. The, um, you the, see how well we manage. Yeah, I was going to say, you see how well we're managing. <laughs> Let's just pass laws that affect other people. Yeah. Right. Yes, right. Stab we're not us. We're good at that. So much easier. Uh, I've never seen a piece of legislation before, and and I don't claim to be a fully informed historian on this. That imposes or seeks input um, from an organization that is staffed by a half-time, one-person, no-staff individual. What do you mean? Me. Yeah. I mean, the Larry statute doesn't... basically says, Larry, give us the options next uh, right. next fall. That's what it says. With right. your commission. It, well, I'm, I'm doing the work. Right. And so I, 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 you know, I, would much, I would much have preferred to say, I'm happy to give you a list of options rather than have it be in a statute. I just, it, it, it feels like, uh, I don't want to say a burden, but it is a lot to put on a half-time position person, that's all. If you pass it, it'll get done. If you take it out, it'll probably still get done. Is there, are there overtime options? No. no. Yeah, no. no. So I, I finished my hours for this pay period early this morning, and uh, it, you know the longer I spend, the, it's just the more more gift. The really more gift to the state of Vermont. Well, that's all our constituents. Yeah. Hopefully, you have a lot of input from advocacy groups and others to make your job easier in terms of coming up with enforcement ideas. I don't know. We'll see. Time will tell. I'm sure there's some groups that we can has to be involved. I think there are some very good models out there that we can take and choose Ho from. Hopefully you don't have to reinvent the wheel. No, I don't see any reason why we would have to. And uh, and there are, and I, and I think I mentioned in earlier uh, appearances that the models are all over the place in mm -hmm. terms of how far things are um, enforced and who is and who isn't mm -hmm. subject to enforcement and what that looks like and whether, for example, if we're talking about the state um, officers, statewide office holders, you know, would an ethics commission have a hearing and then make a recommendation to the General Assembly and they would take care of the sanction or would it be that the, uh, the commission or someone has that authority themselves? These are, um, it's a long list of options that I'm happy to give you. So I can suggest that it, it, this is effective upon passage. You've right. already done a lot of work on both of these, on the state code of ethics and on options. And it's eight months before it's due, <coughs> assuming that you don't get 400 complaints that you have to deal with. Um, it, it seems to me it's doable in eight months. And you could just call NCSL and ask them to send you a list of all the things that all the other states do. And there's your list of options. But there's, so there's your list of options. I mean, <laughs> because you're not making recommendations. Right. So. I'll check my piece. We'll vote. Yep. We'll do whatever you want. So. And we wish you well. Thank you. We're happy to help. It's Thank you. in our non compensated it's off done most of it. I'm ready. We have a Senator Bray or all of them. I know. But we just put you on the spot. No, I'm, I'm supportive of the moving ahead. As for compensation, I'm looking at her ass. Well, I didn't, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't need compensation. I, I wasn't asking for compensation, just pity. Yeah, so that's so not a rational group. Yeah. Well, or it's not a, yeah. Right. I think we're reasonably rational. Yeah. We're just undercompensated. Well, don't anybody for a moment believe that the minute we start talking about enforcement, we're not talking about dollars, though. So. Oh, yeah. No, so, we know that. And, and that's the concern. That right. that, 
right. dollar bill will kill the code. That's my only concern. But we're not asking for yeah. a recommendation about no, enforcement. We're just asking for some options that we could do. And we may say the best option is to do it exactly the way we're doing it. But it's hard for us to make that, first of all, until we see the thing and then we look at the options. And anyway. Anyway, maybe, maybe so. go home for the year there, quickly. Talk with the probations. Maybe they'd be willing to invest at a higher level. No, they wouldn't. They would not. No, I know that. You know, the opportunity here is great to build in such mechanisms that require serious whole time. <laughs> so you 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 also might call us um, UVM. They have a couple different programs that have. Um, internships for students and a student might be a really good resource to do a lot of the research on options we speaking of which we have two we have interns right here who have just walked into the room they had recently oh. we have two uvm interns this oh. afternoon moira who is working with me i'm and carter carter yeah so i'm also going to be working with uh rep uh, lucy rogers on the social equity caucus so oh good so see some of your colleagues might want to work with larry potentially yeah and richard watts program we can put you thank you so Okay, so we have a motion on the floor, which is to uh, approve draft 3.1 of S198. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Fred? Yes. Clarkson? Yes. Colin? Yes. Pa Paulina? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carries. And then I think we need to do the final motion, which is to approve S198 as amended. I would say Bray. Yes. Clarkson. Where is she? Yes. Kalama. Yes. Helena. Yes. And White. Yes. Great. Would you like to repeat this? Since it was your bill? Yeah. We have you down. I have to look at all my bills. I didn't think so. No. I was doing it. Oh, we do it. We have oh, it. Oh, we pulled oh, it. Oh, yeah, right. That's right. That's right. You were, yeah. Great. We've already assigned it. Okay. All right. This is true. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. I appreciate your comments. Yeah.